Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about cookies and persistence and, and specifically how the cookie value is uh, created in, on the Big IP. Uh, so before we get into the calculations of how the Big IP figures out cookie values, uh, I'm just going to draw a quick little uh, quick little diagram up here where you have a client who uh, is wanting to ultimately access a back-end web application and they're going to come into your big IP here and then you're going to have uh, your back-end um, servers back here uh, via pool members and a pool and all that kind of stuff. So let's say for example the pool that ultimately gets selected is called, uh, I'll call it HTTP pool. All right, you can name it whatever you want, really. And so if cookie persistence is turned on here on the big IP, as the client accesses what ultimately would be one of the pool members in this pool, um, then the big IP, when it responds, the HTTP response, it's gonna include, uh, so I'll just say here's your uh, response right here, it's gonna include this cookie. And a cookie is just a, it's just a value, it's, uh, it's got different information kind of stored in it. Um, and so, uh, so then, once this cookie has been presented or sent back to the client, then the client on subsequent, subsequent request, as long as the cookie is not, uh, is not expired, then uh, the client will include that cookie with any future HTTP request, and then it will get sent back to, you know, let's say it, let's say it uh, hopped over here to this guy. It's always going to come back to that, same, to that same server. And so that's the cookie persistence. You're going to persist back to that same place. Um, and there's a number of reasons to do that. We won't get into all of them today, but, uh, but anyway, nonetheless, that's kind of the overview of what happens. All right, so the question is, um, how does this cookie value get calculated and what goes into that? And so the first thing I wanna mention is the default name of the cookie itself, uh, and you can change any of this if you want to, but the default name is big, capital letters big, and then small IP, and then server, and then I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put this right here, pool name, pool name right here, and then equals uh, this value, okay? So in our example, this would be big IP server HTTP underscore pool equals, and then a big old whole bunch of numbers and stuff. And so that's the, uh, that's the default uh, nomenclature, the naming convention for uh, the cookies that the big IP is gonna uh, create. And so, um, whenever, let's say that this backend server that ultimately gets uh, selected has an IP address of 10.1.1.100, okay? And so, if that's the IP address of the server, the, the cookie value is going, to be, um, is going to be created based on the IP address of that server as well as the port number. And let's say that it was port uh, let's call it 8080, just for, just for example, okay? So here's what happens. You've, you have ultimately selected IP address 1011100 at port 8080, and you're gonna send a cookie back. So what the big IP does, I'm gonna kinda come over here just a little bit and say the first thing it does is it takes the IP address, so this uh, 10.1.1.100, and it, and it converts that into hexadecimal values. So we're gonna say hex equals, this is gonna be zero by, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I get all this correct here, zero A, so that's that 10 part, and then zero by zero one is one, zero by zero one, and then zero by, uh, let's see, 64 is gonna be the 100, okay? So we've converted these four numbers into hexadecimal values. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna concatenate all those together, we're gonna crunch them all together, and, uh, and so that would make, and we're gonna drop this zero X in front of each one of them. So now we've got a zero A, zero one, zero one, uh, 64. So we're gonna crunch all that together, and then we're gonna reverse order that. So I'm gonna kinda do all that in one big step. So, uh, so I'll put reverse order equals so we're gonna start with, and I'll put the zero X up here just to, just to let you know we're still in hexadecimal values. So it's gonna be six, four there, and then we're gonna come backwards. Zero, one, and then backwards again, zero, one, backwards again, zero, A. 
Alrighty, so now we have this hexadecimal value, 6401010A. All right, then we're gonna take that and we're gonna convert to decimal. So we're gonna say, what's the decimal value of that hexadecimal um, number right there? And so in this case, it's a big old number, 16777874020. I did this, uh, I did that beforehand. I did not just convert to hexadecimal in my brain. So I'm not, uh, not quite that good at hexadecimal conversion. All right, so you're left with this big crazy value. All right, so that is the, the decimal representation of this reverse order hexadecimal that's ultimately based on this IP address, which is the IP address of the server that you, that you connected to. And so, uh, so anyway, so if we were gonna convert that, or if we're, if we're gonna take that and put it into now our cookie, we would say our cookie would now be big IP server, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put in HTTP pool equals, all right, now this huge number, 16777874020. But then we're going to put a dot right here and we're going to take the port number 8080 and we're going to do the exact same, um, the exact same calculation on that. So if we start now with uh, port 8080 and then we're going to go hex on that equals um, hexadecimal on that is 0 by uh, 1F, which is the first uh, 80 right here and then zero by um, 90 is the second one there. So we, you take it uh, like a bytes at a time. So that, we're gonna do the reverse order. So we're gonna say uh, reverse, reverse equals 91F, and then convert that to decimal, and that is going to equal 36895, okay? So that is the port number when we do all the calculations. That's the port number value that's going to come into the cookie. So all that stuff from the IP address and then dot 36895. And then finally, what the big IP does is it also adds a period and then there's four zeros right here. So it's going to add four more zeros. Those don't mean anything right now. Those are reserved for future use. And so um, those are just going to be there and the big IP can... Uh, can take that and use it in future iterations uh, as necessary. One other quick thing I was gonna mention here, the port number is not always gonna be this huge number. Let's say it's a port 80 or port, you know, whatever. Um, if the port number is less than 256, then this first hexadecimal value right here is just gonna be zero X and then zero zero. And then it's gonna take, um, you know, the other hexadecimal value of whatever the port number is. So it's still gonna be a four digit, um, you know, value. Uh, but if it's less than 256 on the port number, then it's just going to fill in with zeros on that first uh, uh, byte. So anyway, so hopefully you understand a little bit more about the cookie naming convention, the way that it actually creates the different values. And then, of course, if you were able, if you were ever, uh, if you ever had a desire to, to capture the cookie value, then you could capture all this stuff and then you could flip it around and just reverse engineer all this stuff, reverse order it, and then you would have your your IP address and port number of the server that was selected. So, uh, so anyway, so hopefully you've learned a couple of things about cookies in general, persistence, but ultimately what those cookie values mean on the big IP. So thanks for watching this uh, edition of Lightboard Lessons, and we will see you guys out there in the community.